So welcome to the business end of our coach. We're at the driver's side, kind of in the back area of our 2015 Integra Aspire. And this is where our wet bay is located. Uh, we've done quite a few upgrades to this area. So uh, come along with us and we'll show you what they're all about. So before we get started, I'm going to set up my trusty little camping chair. And this chair is actually not very good for going and hanging out with your friends when you're RVing at a, you know, a campfire or anything like that. It's actually very portable and very good for when I'm working on the RV. Uh, we picked this one up at Amazon, I'm pretty sure, on Amazon, and we'll put a link for it. But these videos typically take about an hour to film, and I don't feel like sitting on my knees for all that time. So let's get started. So you might have noticed uh, initially that there's a bunch of these kind of gangly wires here, and those aren't normally part of our, our uh, wet base setup. Uh, we'll go into that in a little bit, but first we'll kind of tell you what that is and, and why it's here. Um, we're actually at REV, which is a technical service center here in Alvarado, Texas. This is an authorized service center for Fleetwood, Monaco, Holiday Rambler, and American Coach, I believe. Uh, they are doing some maintenance for us here. We got a full tour of the facility and got to film a bunch of really unique stuff about the maintenance process, so make sure to subscribe for that video. But the reason why all this is here is that about 100 feet behind you is a dump station, which is located in their uh, campground that's located on premise, which is where we are right now. Now this is a portable macerating system. We're not going to go tremendously into this in this video because we've already done a video which I'll put a link for here. And essentially what this does is this allows us to dump our tanks through a standard garden hose. And because we have a 100 foot garden hose with us, we can actually use this system to dump our tanks way behind you without having to move our coach. So what these wires are, one here is a trigger, which turns on and off the macerating pump, as you can hear there. The other wire here goes up to the 12 volt power, which has a quick release there. Uh, all of which is covered in our, our other video. So we're going to get this out of the way and then talk to you about uh, a bunch of the upgrades we've done in here. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's cover some of the basics. Um, one is we've got a clear elbow here that assists us in uh, dumping our black tanks and our gray water tanks. Essentially, the clear elbow is very effective especially if you have a tank rinse system like we do, in uh, making sure and kind of giving you a visual indicator of when your tanks are full. Not a lot of rocket science into this. This has been around for a very long time, but we highly recommend uh, looking into that for your setup. The second thing we have here is a uh, standard sewer cap connector uh, that you normally see in most RVs, with one exception, which is that ours has a garden hose attachment at the end. What that allows us to do is dump our gray water using a standard garden hose. In situations where we're doing that, we do need gravity on our side, and we also do need to dump into a, a location where um, it's allowed uh, by law, such as a sewer cleanout. But um, this does give us some more flexibility in terms of distance from our standard kind of 15 foot uh, sewer pipe connection. Okay, let's move on to some of the more interesting and unique things about our setup. Now. This right here is your standard kind of run-of-the-mill garden hose um, that we've added, but we've actually found that this is really useful, and I'll give you a couple reasons why. Um, so before I tell you about the reasons why I like it, kind of give you some of the high-level setup. There's a small adapter here that you can purchase at Home Depot, or we'll put a link for Amazon that converts this threaded adapter. I'm not sure the exact size. I think it's a, I think it's a half inch, uh, but it was what hooked up kind of your standard hose length with your shower head adapter, and it converts that to a garden hose adapter. Now, why we really like having this is our bus is 45 feet long. This hose is 50 feet long. So this gives us the ability to, when we're stopped at say a truck stop, or when we go to get gas or somewhere else, to turn on water here and actually wash our windshield. Those long pole washers that you see at a lot of truck stops are or at Flying J's and whatnot are great in a pinch and they do a good job of scrubbing, but you know, the squeegee is just, it's a mess and it leaves your, your coach pretty dirty. So this is a great 
uh, way to be able to rinse that windshield uh, off and keep it nice and clean uh, so that you don't have all the bugs building up and creating a big mess. Another thing that's nice is this trigger uh, attachment that we have here has a lock in it. So you can obviously lock it open, but that's not really as convenient as kind of why we think that's a great option, which is that if you pull this rubber end off, you actually have another threaded attachment there for an additional length of garden hose. That can come in really handy if we're looking to uh, get to the other side of the coach or uh, get water to another location where this 50 foot hose isn't, isn't quite long enough. Now, yeah, obviously if you're at a campground, you can just hook up to the city water or the uh, campground water with a, with a length of hose and you don't really necessarily need all of this, but this allows you to use your onboard water. And since we do a lot of boondock camping, if we want to rinse off a particular area of our RV or we just need water access further than you know a small hose in this area, this allows us to use our onboard water. Okay, moving on, the next thing we have in our wet bay is our sea level uh, tank level monitor. This thing is awesome. This came factory installed in our 2015 Integra Inspire and we're, we're pretty spoiled as a result. Uh, we didn't really know how many folks have issues with levels in their tank being accurate until we started getting on the road and talking to other folks about kind of what the experience has been with other brands. But this system gives us our battery level, our house batteries uh, in voltage, and then a percentage indicator for our fresh gray and black tanks. Um, we find that this is highly accurate and uh, works really well, especially if you regularly rinse your black tank. Our friends at Powhana Travels actually had this installed in their Fleetwood um, Discovery. So, or actually I think they installed it themselves. So we'll put a link to the video there if you're interested in adding this to your, to your rig and to your setup. But we really love this. One also nice feature is you actually can double click that and it will keep the, uh, the level on the screen lit up for you for I think it's about five minutes. That comes in really handy if you're draining or dumping the tanks. All right, I'm gonna move back a little bit and show you some of the other things that we've done here. Um, before we get started on some of the customizations, I do wanna tell you that this uh, hose reel that came factory installed with our, our uh, Integra has been awesome. We've had zero problems with it and it's been, it's been really reliable. Ironically, I did find those for sale on Amazon. So if you are interested in adding a, a power hose reel, to your setup. Uh, this is the switch for it right here. Um, those run a few hundred dollars and you can add them uh, pretty easily to the, uh, the wet bays as long as you've got the room for it. So kind of the grand finale of our wet bay uh, video here is this contraption here, which um, I didn't think of. I wish I had, but I actually didn't. I'll, I'll give some credits to John and Barbara uh, fellow Integra owners who actually donated this part to us when they traded in their, I believe, 2014 Anthem. Okay, so what is this essentially? Well, the benefit, we'll start with the benefit. What this does is this allows us to use our rinsing system without having to have any additional hoses. And really, we can turn on our rinsing system with just one turn, which is boom, that's it. Our rinse system is on. Now, I'll get into why that water's coming out and what that means. That's all very normal. But before we go into that, what this is made up of essentially is, is uh, PEX pipe, which you can buy at any Home Depot. You can get about 10 feet of it for something like, I think $5. I could be wrong, but I'll put some links uh, in for that, as well as some, some connectors and then some shark bite uh, fitting clamps that uh, provide a watertight seal. Uh, this is all residential grade equipment. This is used in homes and uh, works absolutely great. We're going to take this off in a minute, but before we do so, I'm going to just explain the entire setup here. So coming from here in our hose reel, we're coming out. This is our fresh water supply line. We're coming into a T-junction here that's providing water to both this valve and this valve. Right here, this is the valve for our fresh water shutoff, so we can shut the water off here, uh, which means we will no longer have fresh water going into our tanks. And then up here is the valve that controls our wrenching system, which I showed you before. Above here is a vacuum breaker. And this vacuum breaker is a high quality vacuum breaker. 
Um, they do make pretty cheap ones for about $5. A really good quality one that has a double valve in it is about $30, and I think that's definitely worth the investment. What this does is this prevents water that comes out of the rinse system when you shut it off from backflowing through here into your fresh water system. But that little tree there, I think all in all to build that costs around $30. Um, I'll put a full parts list in uh, in the article, but before we go too much into that, I'm actually going to take this off and show you guys how to crimp on some of these PEX connectors if you've never done it before because it's really easy to build one of these and I highly recommend you carry some PEX tools with you while you're traveling because if you ever have a plumbing leak or break, these will be a lifesaver in you being able to fix that without having to go spend money on costly repairs. Before we start with showing you how to crimp PEX, we're going to take this off. As you can see, there's some funny angles here, and that's because this came off of a, uh, an Anthem, not an Aspire, which had a little bit more distance in between these two connections. So we're going to take this whole tree off and actually shorten this length here by about a half an inch, and that'll straighten up all the lines and make this look a lot nicer. All right, so now that we've got it off, that's pretty much it and it's not too complicated um, to build one of these. So we're going to go inside, set up the camera with a little workbench and show you how to crimp this to build one of these for yourself if you're interested. All right, so we got our little camera set up here and here's our, our little uh, plumbing tree, as I call it. I'm not sure that's a technical term, but I've always called them trees because they kind of have branches. Um, so a couple different tools. Obviously, you can build this if you'd like. We're not going to go into the specifics. It's pretty simple. I mean, these are T's and these are right angles. Uh, and then there's small amount of packs that you'd have to measure depending on your RV setup and your wet bay. This thing's awesome though. It really gets rid of all of your hoses and just gives you a much simpler solution. Um, but let's go into the, the tools that we have here. This is a PEX cutting tool uh, made by SharkBite. Uh, we like this because, well, the well, number one reason we like it is because it's an inexpensive uh, cutter. The other reasons we like it is it does half inch, three quarters, and one inch PEX, uh, all with a single cutter that's pretty portable, so that's nice. This is a uh, PEX crimp tool. I know that this will do half inch and three quarter. I'm not sure if it'll do one inch. I'll put that in the, uh, in the right below here. Um, and what this does essentially is this crimps on these small little clamps, uh, which hold uh, between your uh, unions here and your packs to give you a watertight fitting. We went outside and did a quick measure. I'm going to pull this off here and show you. We built up, we put a line here. That's how much we need to remove in order to make this fit properly on our coach. So we're going to take our PEX cutting tool here and the blade is dead center right in the middle. So we're going to line that right up with that line that we created, squeeze it open, and then Make sure that we're set up with the blade right center. I'm not sure you can see that, but it is right on the line. And then we're just going to twist it. Uh, I believe that's counterclockwise if the blade is located on this side. And there are arrows to tell you which way to turn it. Usually it's about one, maybe two full turns, and boom, there you are, and we're right on the line. So. Now we're going to grab one of our clamps and keep in mind, even if you're not building this, as I said, this is something you really should, should have uh, handy in your RV in case you have any plumbing problems or you need to, to make any adjustments to your coach. Uh, so we, we would consider a PEX tool an essential tool for, for, uh, for full-time RVing. So if you look at this PEX tool here, it, it works very much like a set of pliers, except for it has a much smaller opening here when it's fully opened. And inside here, that's where you put the clamp end here into the tool. So it's probably going to be a little hard to see what I'm doing here, but we're just going to get that set up so it's pretty much ready to be crimped down. We're going to make sure everything's nice and tight and also straight. We're going to leave ourselves about, I don't know what that is, about an eighth of an inch of play there. And then this is kind of the hard part with a tree this complicated, is we're going to squeeze this tight 
and also try to keep it straight while we do it. And just requires one and then it'll release and that's it. Got yourself a watertight seal. So we're going to go install this back on our coach and uh, finish up the video. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up. We put back our tree here. Uh, it's all reinstalled and ready to go. A huge thanks to um, to John and Barbara Ahrens who actually took this off their 2013 Anthem uh, and gave it to us when they upgraded to a Cornerstone and gave us the idea to share this with you, with you guys. Uh, so thanks so much, guys. Um, a quick sneak peek for folks who stayed to the end of the video. We're actually doing a complete wet bay automation project that should be pretty interesting. Check this out. This was all built by us. Uh, this is a relay control box. This is a touch screen uh, computer. And this is gonna actually be installed right here. And this is gonna automatically control our black and gray valves, a master rating system that has been uh, provided to us by Thetford, the uh, Sanicon 600, which is their brand new model that they've released uh, to solve a lot of the challenges specifically around uh, gray water bypass issues uh, for macerating customers and also speed issues with macerators. Um, again, all going to be controlled here by this nice little touch screen. There'll be another one of these up inside the coach so we can run all of our wet bay functions from inside. This is also going to control, if everything goes right, our black water system, our rinse system, sorry, and it's also going to control our freshwater fill system. Uh, it's gonna give us some really unique and interesting features. We're hoping to make sure that we can add timers to all these things. So you can press one button and fill your tank for three minutes or four minutes or five minutes, depending how empty it is, and a bunch of other things. So make sure to subscribe and click the bell so that you're notified on that future video. Thank you so much for watching guys, and we'll see you on the road. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also subscribe to the blog directly on livinglight.net and you'll receive email updates of all of our posts. Whoa!